We begin with the guard, Clarence Swearinger, the excellent defensive specialist, averaging better than 11 points a game. Ronald Taylor earns the start, five points a game for us. Doug Roth, the shot blocker, has six in the first meeting between these two. Mark Griffin can fill it up from the outside. And Dyron Nix, Tennessee's leading scorer, 22 points a game. Don DeVoe, 11 seasons in Knoxville, can win his 200th game for Tennessee with a victory today. For LSU, Chris Jackson, the freshman phenom and LSU's leading scorer. Lyle Moulton, steady, growing stronger, just a sophomore. Brunel Singleton, 18 points in game number one. Wayne Sims, we talked to him in our pregame show, rugged inside. And Ricky Blanton, he's played the post position, the power forward, and now the small forward. And for Dale Brown in his 17th season here, he has beaten Tennessee in five of the last six meetings between the two schools. That's our AC Delco starting lineups. AC Delco, automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. Our opening time. Because that puts so much pressure on him that he's going to have to live up to. The kid's very level-headed. He's answered every wish. A great player. Don DeVoe only released that starting five to us if we promise not to give it to anyone else. He was quite secretive. There it is. A great matchup. You see Nick, he'll be guarded by Blanton when they go man to man. Two great players that have been through the wars. The leaders of both teams. There's Don DeVoe done a great job. Went was 5-0 at one point. They lost four straight. Changed the lineup. Now he's back on an uptick on a roll. His 11th year in Knoxville. His 18th as a college head coach. The crowd in the assembly center has just been warned that they may be assessed a technical foul if they continue with their demonstration of enthusiasm. Now, he did it differently than Billy Tubbs from Oklahoma. <laughs> Billy said, no matter how bad the officiating is, don't throw. Gale did a little bit more uh, stuff at that time, and don't throw them. He is 14 and 8 against John DePaul and Tennessee. This for first place in the Southeastern Conference. Just three weeks of SEC basketball remains prior to our tournament in Knoxville. We're glad you're with us. And the opening tap belongs to LSU. It is Jackson to Blanton outside the line for three. That's what you call recognition. Getting it down the floor quickly. Both teams like the run. Blanton sticks it. Both teams will play a man on man today. Swearing it over Jackson. Connects for two. And the best penetrating guard in the conference. He wants to try and get Jackson in foul trouble, took him to the hole. Mouton started to move, cut off by Taylor. This is Blanton with penetration, trying to pass it across the lane. Ross deflected it, squares his control. To the hole. And a whistle. Mouton from the left side. With the foul, this game's first. Great matchup. Nick guarding Blanton. Squares him with the steal. Watch him go solo. Flip the seam. Throw it up. Draw the foul. He's off on a roll. Immediately. You know, they sat him down when we did the over game last weekend. So he earned the spot back. Woke him up. Now he's playing like he's capable of playing. The senior struggles at the free throw line. As you see there, only 46 of 86. He heard you. He answered. He has all three for the balls to tie us. He'll be the all-time trivia man for Tennessee. He was the first player to score a hoop in the Thompson Bowling Arena. Off the tip, the dunk. He's been in double figures. Four of Tennessee's five most recent games. And he's well on his way this afternoon, already with four. What did he three for this team today? Nice rotation. Hotel. He looks to be putting on a little bit of weight, larger than I remember it. The training table's good here. Sims bouncing low post for Singleton and Griffin with a fine overplay, the defensive effort. Tennessee working on denying the post pass last night in practice. A very active player, was a baseball player, academic All-SEC, and a three-point shooter on this team. Plays a little bit. He's going action. From 20, right on the arc, that's a two-pointer. Chris's first bucket, he averages 27 a game to face the Bayou Bengals. He didn't wait 19 minutes to get his first deuce this time. Right off the bat. Ross. 22 feet away from the hole to Griffin. McCord, who can shoot out there. Alex, the pass to Taylor, who forced it. It won't fall, and the rebound is the same. Bad shot. Ray Ford. Jackson feeding Singleton. Griffin there, contact. Singleton will shoot a pair. Nice pass to set up 
In showing to Humphrey for You see what LSU wants to do. They want to run down the floor. They fill the lane. Singleton gets down. Good pass. Stops on the dime. Good call. He'll be at the line. Both sides with a foul now. Donovan's balls and Griffin hit with their first. And here is Bernal Singleton. Just a freshman. He's played outstanding basketball for LSU. One of the guys that Dale Brown really wasn't counting on before the season started. His emergence has lifted this team to a different level. He made them both. LSU by three. Both teams very similar in style. They have the star player, Nixon and Jackson. Lots of role players. They like to spread the floor and up-tempo it. Looking for Nix. He's yet to touch the basketball at the top of your screen. They're off with it. Flatten all over Dyra Nix. Swearingen backing in on Jackson. Throws it up. It will not go in. Singleton clears. He's only 6'6", but he got off the floor that time. What leg? What leg? Good Jackson. Great pass for him. Jackson second on the LSU roster and assist. Picked up a brilliant one there. Somebody talked about his shooting before. Can he find the open man? Dipped it in there. Most call. Watch this. It out of play. Is this what they call uh, threading the needle? Look one way, bam, right to him. Sims ought to say thank you, Chris Jackson. The perfect pass by Jackson. Travis Henry off the ball bench. Square engine will sit down. Henry has been a starter this year, number 25. This is Ross, 12. Off the iron, gets his own missed shot, which he does so well, and fills it up. Use the glass. Doug Ross, big man in the middle, going up strong. Averages 10 a game. He has his first two. Jackson. No, and it comes long to Sims right back to Jackson. Dishing off, move on inside the arc. Every superstar does about three things. He wants the ball late in the game. He creates and he distributes. Jackson just did it. Mouton answered. And Dyer and Nix is yet to touch it. The offensive end. Now he does against Blanton. Going up there. Offensive foul. Ricky Blanton playing well defensively for LSU early. As a freshman, he went against people like Provis Ellison. Inside, he plays behind Nix. Gets a little help. Good acting job. Good call. Go the other way. Watch it again. As a freshman playing against big centers, Kenny Walker, that time he drew the foul on Dyer Nix. Jackson double clutch, who came up short, got his own missed shot, adjusted over Ross, and five, he's done that. <laughs> you can't coach it, you can't teach it, it's just called quick release, his jumping ability. What a player. The Mississippi freshman with four of LSU's 13. Henry against Jackson, threw it away, looking for Nick. But Tennessee is intent on getting Dyer in the ball. Actually, he really, I believe, was trying to find Ross because Ross made it come to double-team Nick down low. Don Deneau says, let's go, let's go. we got to keep it close on the road early. Jackson against Henry. And Travis commits Tennessee's third foul, and this game is not four minutes old. Oh, there's a quickness difference there. Henry cannot possibly keep up with Jackson. That's the fun limb away from the middle toward the sidelines to get the help. Yeah, but Henry is a solid defensive player. He's second on the ball roster in steals. Not a bad guy to put on Jackson. For a minute or two. Full call. It hit the top of the backboard. And it will go to Tennessee. Big possession early. Tennessee trailing by seven. We want to work it down low. Got to get Nixon fouled. In the half-court game, Taylor to Henry with the hand pass. Out front. This is Ron Taylor connecting from three. He earns the rare start. Carries his first shot. The 6'3 junior from Moulton, Alabama, to pull Tennessee within four. He hit 53 in junior college. You know he can keep the ball. Three point two. Sim spinning, shooting, missing. Moulton runs it down. Kept alive by Singleton. Blanton again. Blanton second. Three point field goal. The ball. Are hot. Or rather, the Tigers are hot. Ricky Blanton, the heart and soul, the leader. It's their inspiration. Griffin in the corner, out to Henry Rock, way outside. Good pass for a big man. They're trying to ISO right there. Bad pass. Again, hunting Nick, and it ends up with the cheerleaders. Out of play. Timeout on the court. 15 41 showing. LSU playing at home, leads visiting Tennessee by seven. 
SEC basketball is brought to you in part by the owners of Days Inn, hotels and suites in the Southeastern Conference. Boy, is LSU shooting the ball well early. Both shooting well. LSU getting more shots means they're leading the battle of the board. Here is Sam. That'll make two. In and out. Touched the rope and came out. Usually automatic. Soft touch. A rare miss for LSU. Rock. The Henry. And three turnovers. LSU only one. They've got to protect it better and get some good shots at the basket. Griffin. Out front to Nick's. Ooh, Ross wide open. They got to get it to him. They pulled Nix out high, and Ross down low now. Nix has come outside. Ross forced it. Short over the back is Kyle Sims. How many times do you see the bad shot followed by another mistake? Ross, as you mentioned, will force it. Now he commits the Cardinal sin over the back. Good blocked out position by Sims with the wide body. Tough to get around him. The fourth team foul on Tennessee. The first on the big man. In Doug Ross at 6'11. And this is Sims who drew the foul to Blanton, who's nailed two three pointers. And he'll try for a third. No. And the foul is on this time. LSU. Luton over the back. Good blocking out by both teams. Good position. LSU spreads the floor well. Good floor spacing the shot. Watch the inside position. Taylor over the back. Luton. Good call. Griffin out of notion. Will not shoot. Henry now to Ross. Nice to the officials. I can't believe it. Ron Taylor to Henry, guarded by Jackson. There's Griffin, 25 feet away. I post off an excellent pass. Nix used the elbow with the left That's side two to get free as his first two there. With that high-low offense, you take away weak side help. Nix locks his man on his hip. Got the good pass for the two. Takes him five and a half minutes. Oh, oh, Jackson! And there's that is foul. Count it. Oh, my, oh, my. Second. Oh, do Henry's need, all over him. Do we need to say anything? Watch this. Oh, man. A little emotion. The hand flex. Henry, what else can you do? You say you did. That's right, folks. Jackson misses the free throw. Rebound to Griffin. Swearingen replaces Henry, who came in to guard Jackson and promptly picked up a pair of fouls. <laughs> what can you do? They're platooning on Jackson. Taylor. In and out. Blanton takes it off the glass for LSU. Jackson across the timeline. Picked up by Swearingen. Drives right around it. Run down by Clarence. Oh, no dough. No do. Gotta stick it in the hole. Behind the back, and Jackson off the move, reached in. Clarence went behind his back, and Chris was frustrated. Early on in the season, LSU was worried about his mentality after making a mistake. When he get down? Clarence swears it. Nice dribbling. Sticks his hand in. Good call. But he shakes it off and goes back to play. The third on LSU, the first on Jackson. A seven-point game is next. Takes it down low and shoots over Blanton. Too strong. The tap-up misses. Griffin now next for the layup. Griffin kept it alive. Taylor was right there. So good movement on the board. That's the strength of Tennessee. LSU did not block it. Trailing or leading by five, rather. Jackson draws contact on the floor. And this will be as Swearingen picks up the foul, the sixth on Tennessee, and they pick up six, their limit, in less than six minutes. Obviously, they're trying to wear Jackson down, put a lot of people on him, skip back and forth. No depth for LSU. Sims can't get it to fall. Nick with a rare rebound. Outside shot, no one going to the board. Tennessee has four inside positions. Easy rebound. This is Dyron from 22. Short. He runs it down. Bump, no whistle. The lob for Ross, who needed six feet, 11 inches to grab it. He is blocked from behind by Sims. Number on two. Blanton. Blanton with eight. You must stop the ball before you penetrate. Defense didn't. They shifted to the wing. Blanton took it straight to the hoop. A seven-point spread. LSU has led in the early going. Blanton opened the scoring. With the three-pointer, square engine feeds Taylor, who moves in and from 12. It rims out on it. 
Oh, Harper in and out. Went down, around, and popped out. Tough luck. Singleton with another rebound. Clanton, baseline left side. Next round ahead. Out front, Luke's home. LSU has yet to substitute. Sims! From Luke's Body by Nautilus. Look at the arms. Look at the cannons on that kid. Power dunk. The sophomore from Doretto, Louisiana, propelling LSU to this nine-point advantage. Their largest. Taylor lost it. Double dribble, trying to keep it in play. Time out on the court. They're standing in the death zone. 22 13, LSU. Ferocious look at Sims on Tennessee's rock. Just like the stand up. Get it out of there. Inside, Sims playing a little defense. And now he can do a little deep, a little offensively. No weak side help. Ross wait for the gamble. Bam. Power dunk, Wayne Sims time. That's the second time Tennessee's been burned off the overplay. And the shooting statistics there, Tennessee struggling. You don't shoot the ball well, you turn it over, he's going to win that. Ricky Blanton, a 6'7 senior from Miami, already in double figures. That's his 10th point, 10 of the 24, scored by LSU. Boston Celtic scouting booth is here today for the eighth time watching Mr. Blanton. Guy that's played the center position, the power forward position, and now the small forward position. That's Ian Lockhart into the game. Oh, oh Jackson, poetry. Where's the floor balance? Nobody back. Inexcusable, and Jackson made him pay the price. Eight for Chris Jackson. Tennessee unable to keep up in the transition game. Bell's in the lineup, outside shooter. Big possession for Tennessee. Square engine. Offensive foul. Let's see if they count the bucket as he scores. Yes, they will. Good play by Frazier. You're not shooting the ball well. Takes the ball to the basket, just like Donald DeVos said. You're not shooting well from outside. Goes to the hoop. He released it before the contact. Therefore, the bucket is up. Oh, March 93, Swearinger. Having committed his second foul, Swearinger has a pair. Henry has a pair. Nick Griffin and Ross with one each. Well, with 11 minutes to go in the first time, LSU's going to be better. They're shooting the ball well. They're getting the glass. They're getting breakaways. Tennessee's got to hang in close and try and make their run. Blanton hit the front end for his 11th point. He scored in double figures in 25 consecutive games. And a streak which stretches all the way back to March 11th of a year ago. He had 30 against Vanderbilt. A 13-point Tiger lead against the team that's dominated in this arena for five years. Clark, two contests. So Dondavo well into his bench with Ricky Clark stepping to the line. Clark recruited as a off-guard, now playing small forward. So you know he can put the ball on the floor, a little overplay, a little with spin dribble. Tries to pick up a kick by Squares and won't go, draws the contest. In the line for two. Singleton with his first, the fourth on LSU. As Clark, only a 38% free throw shooter, drills it. 10 of 25 on the year. It's amazing, both teams have kind of flip-flopped. LSU used to never shoot free throws, now they lead the league, and Tennessee is in last place for a reversal from years past. Sims with another board. A 12-point spread. Martin loves that spot on the floor. Comes out to the point. Mouton to Sims. Lockhart to Sims. Mouton. Get it together. Go! Oh, no. It's not the NBA. Sorry. <laughs> they say the foul is on the floor. I, I, I wish they had that. I mean, that's just a, a great individual. Why can split the scene? Count it, man. Count it. Good if it goes. It should have been a dude. He was off his feet when the contact occurred. Should have been a dude. Lockhart with his first. And Lyle Mouton to face the front end. If that were you or me, you would have probably got the technical. Put our name in the scoring book. Nick controls off the miss by Mouton. Tennessee making free throws, LSU not. Uncharacteristic. Two Ocon posted at short. They couldn't find it. Bell comes out of the pack, the lower guard. Over Mouton, now Lockhart off the glass for them. Lockhart, that field day against LSU always plays well. Mohammed Adams, battling the flu, he's been ill this past week. For six 
see in one game in the future in the Bahamas. All right, Jackson's going. He may get 60 here. He has 10 already. 10 of the 30 posted by LSU. He has a steal. And in the open court, I get to the slam. Oh, this time the finger roll. Timeout. Penalty. Chris Jackson. A little offense. A little defense. And a little more offense. Quick hands. Quick feet. They love him in Tiger Town. On the offensive end and the defensive end, too. He can clean. B to the hole. 32-18, LSU threatening to double Tennessee. With Jordy Holford, Paul Kennedy in the Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge where LSU enjoys its largest lead of the afternoon at 14. Tennessee coming off its first time out. Lots of time left. You've got to be patient. Get a good one. Lockhart posted again. He scored 19 in the first meeting between these two. He has four off the bench today. He's different from Ross because he's a quick leaper. He's got some size. Look at him. A quick pass. Singleton right back to Jackson. Out front moves home. Underneath the Sims and off the overplay, Lockhart deflected it. You see the pass from Jackson. You better have eyes in the back of your head or he'll drill you. Jackson to Keeley and bounce. Off the bounce to Ricky Blackman. Sims out front. Backing Singleton. Short. Good defense by Tennessee. And Ricky Clark didn't go for the face. Just held his brain. Good play. There he's open. Blocked by Sims as Clark challenged him. The third block for Sims. Jackson another pass. Blackman blind to the bucket. Throws it up. It won't go. Move on. Peters falls off. The tap won't go by Mouton. Pinkball, Singleton, cross contact. A pair of 24s in Tennessee's Clark along with Singleton. Take another look at the block here by Wayne Sims. Sims, they keep challenging him. He keeps answering. All Spalding, all ball. On the other end of the floor, LSU getting four and five attempts. Lots of hustle, quick jumpers. And that's all before they can explode off the ground. There is Singleton. Two for two earlier at the strike. But missing the front end here. Tennessee has to respond. An opportunity. A 12-point basketball game. Defense, Great play. Blanton, however, got a piece of down there. That matchup has been dominated by that man so far. Blanton really working well. Anticipates the pass. Hooks him with his arms. That draw him through the foul. But then Nick has to really come and meet the pass. When he's guarded by somebody like that. Normally, he's being guarded by a tall man inside. Now, Blanton, a little smaller, a little quicker with a big body. Griffin on. Off his Clark. The first foul on Blanton, a fifth on LSU. And Bell converts from three-point range. Just for his bucket. Boy, does he need that in a slump. Only the second three-pointer for Tennessee. But that gets him back within nine. The alley for Blanton. The eye contact, the back screen, Sims goes to the hoop. Blanton with the perfect pass. Bingo. That's what makes Ricky Blanton a great pro prospect. He can do so many things. Does it all. Defense, can shoot, pass it, dribble it, and he leads by example. LSU's lead, back in double digits. Lockhart, 16 feet away, two down. He's not a foot outside, but Sims will play off of him. They slough off of him, mix over Blanton. Rolls across the iron, Singleton, another rebound for the smaller inside player. Tennessee's just standing still offensively. They're waiting for Nick to take over that, helping him. They've got to move without the basketball. Cut to the open seam. Sims, started by Lockhart. This is Blanton. Great by Hicks. Oh, oh, oh. Sims! Griffin. Out of the Which that help was late, but oh, great pass by Blanton. Foul by Mouton. He used the dribble to entice Mouton to come toward it. Well, it'll shake a little bake. There's the reach in. You've got to slide your feet. And if anything, reach up, not across. Reaching down or across, automatic foul. Mouton will leave the game, and he is replaced by Dennis Tracy. Number 13, the 6'2 sophomore from New Orleans, averaging three points a game. Here's Gert Hammett. On to the court, Wayne Sims gets a much-deserved rest. Bell outside the arc, buries another one. That's what it's all about. Bell is on fire, two for two. 34-26. 
LSU. Jackson, the single foot guarded by Griffin. Starts down the lane, still driving for the glass, he's scoring. See, there's an example of a guy who has to play center, but in high school he was a guard on a forward. Swims and sees daylight, scores, draws contact. Quickness down that lane, Curtis. Dale Brown didn't like it. Squares him with great moves to the basket. Just backs him up and then explodes. Takes off. Throws it up. Beautiful play. Dale Brown wanted the off-on foul. Didn't get it. Swearingen with eight. Just to cap the three-point play and give him nine. The foul posted on Singleton, his second. Swearing's it with nine. Three for four shooting at the strike today. 36-29. LSU. Jackson's been a little quiet. Has he shot the ball of late? It's only a question of time. Blanton with Nick Sutton. To Tracy. Tracy, who wrote a letter to Dale Brown, begging for a try out. Blanton first Hammond. Another fine pass. Hammond left alone. That's the guard's responsibility. They drive to the basket. The forward drops down to help. The guard has to slide all the way down underneath the basket. He didn't. As a result, Hammett wide open. The easiest do to get all go. A nine-point spread. In the half-court game, Griffin. Eyes the rim. Moves on Singleton. And at the block, has trouble with it. Yep, scores. His first two, he averages eight. The 6'8 senior from Union City, Tennessee. Wants to get into sales after his college career. Good luck. Jackson, contact with Lockhart, no whistle. Rebound next to Tennessee. That was a four. Ash Jack. Bell. Two minutes. The Lockhart. Hammond. Gummed up to work. Blanton control. Passes to the wrong side. Pass to the defense. Another pass. Tracy. Foul by Griffin. Mark Griffin earning his second, Jordan. Tracy loves to run the ball down the floor. They get it to the perfect middle man in Jackson. They fill the lane. And he always seems to find the right guy at the right time. And now you got to stick that in the hole. Singleton Wayne Wayne Sims has returned. Coming up at halftime, we'll have the Budweiser scoreboard with scores and standings from the SEC and other schools around the nation. Tracy went to my high school. Of course, we lost the state championship my senior year. He won it his senior year, so he's one up on me. Hey, Made one of two. They're batting it around. Hot potato. And a still tough at last. Yeah, Ryan well, didn't think so. Here's a discrepancy between the officials. One official says Tennessee overruled. Good call. It was definitely to LSU. Then he's thinking the jump ball. Down the boat says good call. He wasn't saying anything, though, when it was going his way. Watch that. It comes to tip right there by Griffin. Griffin. It goes out of bounds. Good call. Good work, crew. And David Jones made the correct call there, the official. And the steal. Swans and intercepts the pass intended for Jackson. Draws contact on Chris. He'll shoot two. Jackson with his second. Well, Hamilton held out to try. He picked up his dribble. There's Ricky Blanton and said, hey, look, guys. It's gone from 16 to 8 real quick with 5.33 to go. Little sloppy. Swearington, the catalyst. Swearington, three for four from the field. And a perfect three of three at the strike for his nine points. First game we did with him this year, he said, say hello to my mom. We did it. He lit the place up. Today he came up to me, say hello to my dad. <laughs> hello, Pop. <laughs> he made them both. 11 for Clarence Swearing at the pace of volunteers who have pulled within a half dozen of LSU. Whatever works, right? Whatever works. Black on mix. Iron kept him on. And taps it out of play. Nearly had to steal. Blanton picked it up. He was going to find Jackson posted down low. Great matchup. Two star players in the lead going head up. Man to man. Time for Mr. Jackson. Out of all hammer. He scored already. This one rims out. Lockhart. Controller. Swears and scoops it ahead to Bell. This is his death by the Dutchman. Bell fouled by Tracy. 
Dennis with his first. It will send Tennessee Bell to the free throw line. Bell so good with the dribble, stops on a dime. Good call, good foul. Bell is just a, one of those players that shoots confidence. He's got it now, so he's looking for the shot. That's the green light. Yeah, he's been in a shooting slump as of late. Started the last two games at point guard for Tennessee, and they won both of them. Mississippi State and Auburn. From West Virginia, he's third all-time in career scoring average behind Hot Rod Hundley and Mr. Clutch, Gary West. So he's in pretty good company. Made one of two for his seventh point, a pair of three-point field goals. From London, West Virginia, a five-point game. The balls have been relentless in battling their way back. They haven't turned it over. They get a good shot. Jackson is fouled. Oh, he is wearing out Tennessee's guard. And Don DeVoe knows that depth is a problem. And there's Clarence Warrington with his three. Three in the first half. He's got to take him out. He's going to back him up. He's got such a quick relief. Got it right there on the elbow. This call. Very, very difficult because he can drive past you or he can get it off so quickly from the perimeter. Oh, yeah. His first free throw this afternoon for his 13th point. Here comes the third guard who will be assigned to defend Chris Jackson. Travis Henry on the bench with two fouls. Now Swearns on the bench with three fouls. If he guards in the conference, no question about it. And they'll use all of them. Hammock out. Burnell singles it back. You know, he hit a little iron on the last three throws. He went. He didn't like it. A perfectionist in purple and gold with 14 to lead LSU to the seven-point advantage. He's such a media star. They've asked him every question. Look, they finally asked the only question they didn't ask him before. What was his favorite dessert? He said banana pudding. Now they've asked him everything. Nick leans in. It won't fall. Lockhart there. Lockhart has come off the bench for the Volunteers and registered six. A five-point spread. Jackson quite blocked it. Singleton controls and is fouled on the reach. But you can see the move to get the shot. A little hesitation. Change your pace. Crossover. Watch, watch the dribble. It's amazing. Shake, shake, goodbye. Here comes some help. Good defensive rotation. Good play by Tennessee. And there's the hustle by Singleton. Richard in, draws the back. A foul was posted on Ian Lockhart in his second. He's down to Burrow. Asked what was the call. Singleton, two of three from the stripe. Hits the front end. All the coach wants is consistency on both ends of the floor. If you're going to call one play on one end, call it the same way on the opposite end. Then everybody's happy. Seven points for Singleton already with four rebounds as well. Made them both. His emergency has really lifted this team. Nobody really wanted him coming out of high school, but what a blossoming process he's gone through. A seven-point spread, Griffin, too strong, and that's two. Over the backboard and out of play. We're traveling 90 feet in the opposite direction. Hey, compares this Dale Brown, Singleton to Ricky Blanton in their temperament, middle approach to this game. Team players, lots of heart, lots of effort. And don't kick yourself. There's some talent there, too. <laughs> Jackson with a quick step to get away from Price, and the blocking foul posted on Griffin trying to help out. Charity cost him there. It's amazing. It is amazing. Watch the heavy shoulder thing. How'd you like to guard this? See you later. Goodbye. Here comes help. In that position, Griffin has to put one foot out of bounds to make it obvious and get charged over. Mark, the 6'8 senior with his third. Swearingen already with three. And both Henry and Lockhart with two. So the balls have uh, accumulated a mountain of fouls as Ronald Taylor, who opened in the backcourt, returns and the uh, Griffiths sits down. They've gone with a smaller lineup as Tennessee. They play tendency. LSU with a, a small lineup also. So uh, Tennessee will come in with some guards and try and match up that way. Well, got 13. Jackson made a ball. Timeout on the court. Ricky, will you beat my Valentine? 45-36. They love the Bio Bengals in Baton Rouge. They've been saying for years that billions of Chinese couldn't care less what happened in the SEC until yesterday. He got a letter from Beijing from a Tiger fan. He said, I'm going to have to throw out that story. They care over there, too, what happens to the purple and gold. LSU and Tennessee, both shooting respectively from the free throw line. LSU getting more opportunities, meaning... They're going to the line more, taking the ball to the basketball. 
with the basketball, Ronald Taylor, the junior. Nick, he's been quiet in this first half with just four points, works on Blanton. They double on him. Bell is open from 15 and buries the shot. 23. Well, Tracy's not going to block his shot, so he should leave the floor in the first place to try and keep him, his body between he and the ball. Play solid D. Blanton wanted the ball, so he's got it to him, and Ricky could not hit the shot. Now outside the arc. It rims out, he's fouled, and fouled by Price. Well, that would have counted for four. Don DeVoe's really getting on him, saying, you calling him down here, but not on the other side. Fourteen fouls whistled on Tennessee in the first half, and here comes one of them. The one that saw being called there, didn't get it. Now Blanton will stop from the three-point line and draw a foul there. And missed the free throw. And Bell has the rebound. You see with the left hand, hold Blanton away from the ball. And there's a foul on Tracy. Tennessee's keeping in the ball game. They only trail by seven because they're being patient. They're sticking free throws. And they're getting the ball in close to the basket. Tracy with his second foul. And at the line, Greg Bell. At the line, uh, one of two. One one. There you go. Tennessee's sixth man. Last year before the Alabama game, before the still the team. And should this game be close down the stretch, it could be Bell to take the final shot if Tennessee had the advantage. He shoots it that well when he's hot, although missing here from the line. He's one of the few true one on one play. Jackson, that did not hit the iron. Though. Straight up and down. His first three-pointer, his 17th point today. Price, two on third. On the wing. Nix pops out, Blanton comes right with him. Bell on Tracy. Lockhart posted over Sim. Excellent execution, he just didn't fall. Blanton from 10 uses the glass. He's been posted in the score. He's hit it mid-range and then got outside the earth. Went to the John Wooden clinic to use the backboard. Suddenly, LSU leads again by 11. Taylor from 24 hit. <laughs> NBA style. NBA. Christian Taylor. His second three-pointer. That'll keep you in the lineup. That quiets the 14,000 in Baton Rouge. Black bounces for seven. He tried to save it. Price intercepted. Blanton Miscommunication. Blanton has a good pass. He threw it to the basket. Seems to get held. Hesitated. And that's why the turnover. Two minutes to go in the first half. Bell. Fouled by Tracy. He got free. Tracy cannot keep up with it. Great pass by Lockhart. They ran the high-low. They sent Lockhart on high. He caught it. Didn't hesitate. Flicked it down low. And Bell got it on the head. Watch the pass. And the boom. Get it to him real quick. Pick it up strong. Got it on the head. Watch the pass from the big fella. Quick one. Look. This. That's an execution. Lester Scott will replace Tracy. Scott, a six-foot freshman from right here in Baton Rouge, Glen Oaks High School, and he's played 11 games this year. Doesn't play much. It's in against Auburn. Goes six for six from the floor, two or two from the line. Philly Princess, where did he come from? You know what he what he did say is he's another journey home for her. Because you did that to Sonny Smith too. He told Dale Brown, why don't you put in Holtberg as long as you're going to put in Scott? Come on, now. Made them both. Did it several times. The Tigers still it. A six-point game. Jackson cannot make it nine. Sims chases it down for LSU. Posting Singleton. The jump off. How sweet it is. Look at the smile. Third L. Where did that one come from? Eight for the freshman. Here's Nick. Trying to answer. No. Sims. Affected the shot. Jackson being chased by Price. That's the fourth time Tennessee has not gotten back on defense. No floor balance. And Jackson had the solo trip. With a minute and 20 remaining in the first half, Jackson is a point shy of 20 in the first stanza. <laughs> Ronald Taylor for his third three-pointer. A knuckleball. 
nothing but net. 54-47, Jackson, a two-pointer. Up and down, up and down, report basketball. 21 for the freshman. His season's high has been 53 against the Gators of Gainesville. Here's Taylor, Blanton, swipes it free, Jackson. Ahead to Scott. Block cleanly, Price. Nice recovery, Jackson saves it. Blanton over next, loose ball. Ian Lockhart, no harm, no foul, up and down, three on one. Bell for next, last touch by Dyron. LSU basketball. Transition hoop, a little ragged, down to both. Not accustomed to that style of play. Given up 56 points already, but they're still in it. They've got 47. They're holding for one. And yeah, Don DeVoe used to be a half-court specialist, but he, like Dale Brown, has adopted with the three-point arc and the 45-second shot clock, the run-and-gun philosophy. Let's play up tempo. The shot clock off here. Players that have the ability, you got to let them run. LSU will take this advantage into the halftime dressing room, playing for the final shot with 10 seconds to go. You can bet it'll either be Jackson or Blanton. This is Scott. Scott, Bell deflected it. Nick tried to chase it. It was touched by Scott out of play. You could have called that hell ball, but it would not have mattered for the arrow points toward Tennessee's bucket with 40 seconds remaining. Jordan is through the to play some defense. This might be a situation where you try and advance the ball up the court, call a quick timeout with two seconds left, have a shot at the basket. We'll see what Tennessee does. Lockhart ahead to Bell. The clock doesn't start until it's touched. Bell deflects it out of play. Two seconds expire. Almost as good as the timeout. They got the ball close to Dale Brown. Wants to protect the basket. Picked up. One second to go. Tennessee and Donovo with the ball. Bell to Taylor. At the horn. Good for goal. It does not win at halftime. And LSU leads by nine. Dale Brown, hands on his hips, the crowd loves it, lots of the ball from the Tigers. High coaching staff and team at home watching this one. If he's got the lead the first half playing man, they stick with it. Bell, air ball, Sims didn't see it. It's not got to play by Dyron Lynn. So Sims, who is very sharp in the first half, couldn't find it. He was turning around in the lane looking for the ball, rolling around. All oh, man concept, right? Had his man, didn't find the ball. Nick's off the inbound, blocked by Blanton, saved to Mouton. Ahead to Singleton, a deflection there by Taylor. Mouton underneath Huss Sims, deflected by Lacan. The right idea, just uh, a little overpass. You think Mr. Blanton has Nick frustrated a little bit? Nick's looking for fouls, the good block, good clean play, they go the other way. Ricky Blanton. In the corner, Jackson from 24 for the three-pointer. Well, he's only uh, three away from the Davis, and we've got lots of hoops left. We've played just over a half, and LSU nears the 60-point plateau. Up and down. Uh, Nick posted only his sixth point, and he's fouled. Fouled by Singleton. Yeah, the first time Tennessee runs, it's that offense. They get the ball to Nick. Excellent pass from Price. He sets the whole thing up. Nick's got position. The one power bounce. He explodes up, gets the contact, concentrates. That's what he needs to do. Singleton earns his third. The first of this half. Nick, a 75% free throw shooter, looking to cap the three-point play. It's a lot easier to get your points when you have your hand with the ball like Jackson does so much. Nick really has to work inside and get the ball from others before he can score. Mouton, the skip pass, and that is a ball goal. A rare 3-2 from Don DeVos through. Right at the top, he'll drop down when the ball goes to the wind. He'll have high post responsibility. Mouton with the bounce to Sims, who drives right around Lockhart, except for a little bit too far and without a play. This is a good move by Don DeVos. Change things up a little bit. Maybe take away the penetration of a Jackson, make him shoot from outside. I'm talking to Don DeVore, he says, we don't even know where to find Z in the dictionary for zone. Well, they found it right now. First opportunity, work for it. Bell. Can't get it against the defensive play by Mouton. Can't get it inside, and now it travels. Mouton, fine defense. Well, he, he tried it from the top of the key. He moved over to the left wing, picked up the pivot foot. A little traveling, Don DeVore says, well... This will get any easier. Talking to his chief strategist there, Fred Bryant on the right side. Mouton 
And then Jackson off the pass. Jackson quickly up. And in. Crack free. Maybe from four. That was so far out there. Didn't even hesitate. 27 for Chris. 62-50. Lockhart. Answering a three with a two, however. Another great pass from out to in. To the open side, Lockhart drops the power move. A 10-point spread advantage LSU. Flat with the bounce for Paul. Price, no whistle. As, as Sims comes up with it, however, Jackson out to Bell to the ball. <laughs> great pass for Sims. Air ball contact, no whistle. Nix is down. And slow to his feet. He wanted a charge. Should have got one. Sims could use the backboard. Bell to Price. Lockhart with the hook over Sims. You notice they have a slight tendency from Tennessee. They're playing three out, two in. They're kicking it down inside every time down the floor. Jackson's driving inside and scoring. But he said he's tired of hearing him say three pointers, so let's take it inside and shoot over the big fella. 29 for Jackson. Something He's one of the 10 finalists for the Eastman Award with people like Danny Perry, Sean Elliott, Todd Lixie, only a freshman. Four pass, intended for Lockhart, Jackson for Moore, and he's found. Either you foul it, or it goes in. Yeah, Brad, thumbs up. I told him that, right? Wrong. <laughs> he had it from birth. The Eastman Award goes to the Player of the Year. Chris Jackson in there with some big names. The well, first foul against Taylor, the first against the Bulls. First of all, one of the few sports that one player can come in and make a difference immediately. This fella did it for LSU. He'll get another. His fifth free throw to go with 25 points from the field. You add it up, that youngin's got 30. And now 31. Well, he hit 54 against Florida earlier single season high for him, so maybe not on pace, but should be close. A three-guard set for Tennessee, and Lockhart forced the hook. Got his own missed shot. Missed it. Nick's did not. Gets a little frustration out, so Tennessee still hanging in there. Down 10. Good board work. Nine for Dyer Nick. And the ball set in the zone. Jackson. Underneath Singleton. Good defense, Nix. Up tempo. Nix one on one against Mukhal. Travis. Says official David Jones. When you're not shooting well from outside, you go to the glass. Since Lockhart's been in there, good things have happened. He misses it, gets his own rebound, puts it up again. Good hustle. The authoritative dunk. O'Tan in the corner, Black from 22, bangs off the iron, sails out of play. It will belong to Tennessee. 16-12 remaining in this one. 66-56. Later, Florida and Kentucky this afternoon in Rupp Arena. There's the three out, two in. Working to get it inside. This is Price missing. Nix in the offensive end of things. Forces it up. Sims blocked it. Moves on the other way. Two on one. Bouncing to Blanton. He gets it back and scores. Taylor could not get the steal. Transition. So important. LSU does it very well. From defense to offense. Lockhart. In and out. Rebound. Sims. Out by Jackson. They're playing in transition now. Jackson to Black, to Sims, right underneath. No one go. Nix with the rebound. Usually has a soft touch, he's got to use the backboard. Contact, no whistle, squares it with the left hand, got it to fall. <laughs> Left-handed free throw in traffic. What a play. Holy cow. The senior with his 13th point, first two of the second half, and it's a 10-point game. Once again, was nine in intermission. Squares it with the knee brace, got his left thumb taped up. Blanton for Gray for the third time. His 17th point, the look away assist from Chris Jackson. And the defense has to focus when you're playing a deep team defensive concept. They seek to take away penetration, so everybody stays to the middle. Jackson kicks it out. Blanton wide open. Build it up. Price top of the key. Allier next. Perfect. Great pass. 
when there's no pressure on the point guard, those kind of plays are there. They try to break through the point, make them tough to pass the ball. Knicks held a four in the first half, has now totaled 11. An 11 point game as Sims in front of beats Singleton. Nick blocks it. And it's a hell ball. LSU maintains possession. Good play inside by Nick. There's the arrow. Tennessee to the left. LSU to the right. Swearingen, watch him inside. This is pretty. He's banged up. The hesitation. Take it inside, right, then left. Finger roll off the window. The intensity level has increased. It is LSU by 11, 71 to 60. How will you live in the next century? This one, LSU leading, visiting Tennessee by 11 with Jordy Holt for Paul Kennedy, and the intensity level has increased for both teams. The stars are coming out now. Jackson's been there. Nix is coming out to the occasion. The jumper miss, and the rebound belongs to Tennessee if they travel. Jackson miss, a rare miss for the freshman. That's the automatic travel. It's to the point now you don't even have to get up. Once you're on the ground with it, they call it. Speed, speed the game up a little bit. They feel like they're stunning. Rebounding in the second half, eight for Tennessee to a pair by the Bayou Bengals. Still in the zone, good floor spacing. That zone is Helson. Swearingen driving on Singleton. Contact, offensive foul. His fourth. Singleton drawing the turn. Whereas he made up his mind in that court, he was taking it all the way. The foot he says doesn't like it. He's got to dish it all. Good play by Singleton. Jackson, weaving, feeding, stands from 10. Will not go. Doug Ross into the game, too. And a foul on Price for Tennessee. The freshman earns his second with the reach. You know how many assists Jackson would have? Tim Zimbabwe is somebody with six of those shots. An incredible no-look in traffic pass. Nick's back in the lineup. Replacing number 11. A taller lineup for Tennessee. Swearing to departs. Nick's return. So Nick Lockhart Rock. A tall front line. Blanton got the inbound pass from Jackson. That shows the inexperience, the lack of knowing how to play a zone. I guess the inbound pass. Everyone was zoomed into the ball. They got the easy uh, layup. That calls the timeout. Yeah, Don DeVoe saw it too. Timeout Tennessee, their second. DeVoe and company with two remaining. They trail by 13. Knoxville. It's a month away, Jordan, the 1989 SEC Championship Tournament. Great tournament, lots of parity, lots of teams jockeying for position with all the individual stars come out and see some great hoops. Price, rim of the arc, can't get it to fall. Nix is there. The ball's out rebounding the Tigers in the second half and battling back into it. Big time move there. The LA Clippers are here to take a look at Mr. Nix, and I think they uh, woke him up today. Well, call from Trey. It won't fall. Another board in orange. By Lockhart. This is Price across the timeline. Taylor alone from three. Well out. He is there and feeds Lockhart. Boys, you mentioned it. Leon Lockhart doing it again. Tennessee right back in it. Nine points spread. Lots of play. The largest lead by our count, 14 in this game for LSU. But it's been around that mark ever since. Jackson to Sims. Right back to Chris. They've got Knicks on Jackson on that wing. Lockhart on the other side. So tall people on the wing. He shoots over Knicks. This one won't fall. Singleton rebounds. Reverse layup. No. Ross there at 6 11. Price presses the action. Three on two. Numbers game. Nice. And scoring. His first two. The freshman from Chattanooga. That's a seven point ball game. Timeout. Dale Brown. Let's see. Right in it. Ross made him change the shot. Dale Brown didn't like it. Tennessee. Quickly, down the floor, Price, all the way with a soft touch, back in it. Tennessee has not won here since 1983. They're back in it now. Eight to two run by Tennessee, forcing LSU to call timeout. Tennessee went to the zone, that held them defensively. They went inside offensively. That's why they're in a 13-5 on the board. And Chris Jackson, when he has to, comes up with a big three. Guy Brandon, straight out the hook. A 10-point game again. Price, I post Ross going to the hole. This is Taylor. How many steps was that? Mouton, Jackson, ahead to Lyle, Taylor chasing, Fallon. 
A short pull. Automatic yeah. intro pass. It is. Yes. Two shots in the ball. Exactly. Exactly. Good call, Mr. Kennedy. Well, you don't want to do that. You can get away with it. But Taylor thought he couldn't. He'd rather give up two than the potential of four. There's the automatic foul. Sonny Holmes right there to call his wrist. He's intentional foul. Don DeVoe doesn't like it. But it's a good call. Taylor with his second. The balls. Now with four. Motant will get another. And LSU with the ball. Taylor will not four. Five for Motant. And the ball belongs I to I LSU. Where is it Mouton. You like that? It was it was dinner last night that you served with the Etouffee and the Oysters and Jackson on a Saturday afternoon. Just another walk in the park. Doug Piazza put on a spread last night, didn't he? Sure did. A good time had by all, and Jackson haven't won this afternoon. 37 for Chris, 79 for LSU. Big possession, Tennessee has to get good shot. Next. Came right back off the iron. Glanton with the rebound and then traveled. Did not establish a pivot foot. Didn't complain, just stuck his fist up. Let's play a little defense. Go back to work. Since Dale Brown called the timeout, LSU has outscored Tennessee 6 zip. He was the timeout work, didn't he? Taylor, tough shot. Tim's that run. Ron Taylor's first two of the second half, Jordy, now with 11. Forced it. And it's off the price. Jackson Prime got the foul. And now does. Price would have been wiser simply to lay it up rather than jam it and miss it. That would have been a three-point play. No question. He wants the automatic intentional foul. He won't get it, but still right. He got to lay it off the rim. Get the three-point opportunity. A little showboat. Too much icing. Didn't count. Jackson with his third foul. Only the second posted. Against LSU. From Jackson, as you see, they're officially with 36. As Dale Brown chats with official Sonny Holmes. Down to the ball, rather. He's saying, please call it both ends of the floor with consistency. Price, who missed the jam, cannot hit the free throw. That's his first miss this year. He was 10 of 10. 11 minutes to play, 11 points spread. Coming down to Casey. He missed them both. That really hurt. Oh, great play by Nick to keep it alive. He gets it back. Opportunity for redemption. The feed to Lockhart. Two for Tennessee. Oh, Lockhart. 14 for Ian. Had a career against LSU earlier. Hit 60 back in high school. Playing today. Yeah, 33 in two games for the reserve forward against LSU. This is Mouton to Blanton Cross Court Jackson. From three. Passes around and will not fall. Singleton gingerly earned the pass. Blanton missed from three. Mouton can't get it. Lockhart, another board. LSU going to the boards, but you notice everything is perimeter. The zone is shut off the inside game. Tennessee hanging up down nine. With ten minutes to go in the game. And a big lineup on the floor. Lockhart nipped it off. A win by Tennessee, which crushed him in the first. Is that 3-2. Inside, Roth a good passer, trying to get it down low. Taylor, the bounce out to next, with Blanton on his hip. There it is, low post, looking for Lockhart. Blanton did Tennessee a favor by coming over to try and earn the steal. Oh, but he's just perpetual motion, always hustling. Dale Brown loves him, says he's the favorite player he's ever had here, because he's always hustling. Mouton sits down. We welcome Lester Scott, the freshman, back into the game. Played in the first half field of score. This is Ross. Spinning, shooting, missing badly, and it's off to Scott. Being bumped by Ross. He throws it up. <laughs> and gets it to fall! You know, Coach usually says, but just pass it a couple times before you shoot. Lester Scott. Jackson earns the steal in the open floor against Price. The push of the post. Portrait in motion. What? The spin. And the reverse. How sweet it is. The 
Third foul on Lockhart has John DeVos shaking his head. At the fifth of Tennessee. Scott Hedfick. Now he's playing with confidence. That won't fall for him. No, Lockhart can't hold on. Sonny Holmes thought it should have. Adele Brown thinks it should be LSU's ball. Sonny Holmes did not see it that way, the official. That's good stat. This is the first miss in two games. It almost falls. Let's see who it goes off of. Tough to see. Tough to see. They called it off. Singleton, Tennessee's ball. Still a 13-point difference. 83-70. It's with the alley-oop is open. Price. From 15, blocked by Singleton. Pops out Jackson. Can he do it again? This time the feed for Singleton. <laughs> Singleton blocked it, Jackson with the pitch, your perfect pass for the Dunkaroo. Oh, can he do it? Can Mr. Jackson play a walk? Uh, there has not been a freshman in this league in better than 20 years. That there, the heir to the dream for LSU. He's the man. They're facing. Ross with the goggles removed hanging around his neck. Oh, Moses wears it on his forehead. Kareem keeps it on. Ross wears it around his neck. 38 points, 7 assists. But they made some other shots and they've up to 15 assists. Ross made them both. Just his fourth point of the game. His second. Uh, a pair of free throws in the second half. All they have. Scott misses. Next half court pass. Price. Jackson right with him. And against Jackson. This won't go. Lockhart's tap won't fall. Nix was fouled from behind by Lester Scott. Well, just a tough, tough break. Tennessee with the numbers. Price just couldn't find the bucket. But good recognition and transition by Nix to get the rebound. Tennessee fouled. They'll take it out under, under the basket. To Tennessee. If you're looking for the freak defense by LSU today, you, you won't see it. The who? The freak. The freak. It ain't going to be there anymore. They ditched it. They ditched it because of how poorly they played against Tennessee, the miss on the perimeter. For the single can get up. What lane? And Scott. No. <laughs> That's a shot, a second. <laughs> it's amazing. He missed three, he's out. Uh, Dennis Tracy at the scores table, probably to replace him. Ross with the touch pass to Lockhart. Fouled by Blanton. Good inside pass. Blanton tries to go from weak side. Lockhart just playing lights out this afternoon. Gets it, draws the foul, Tracy did. Yeah, and Scott indeed, an opportunity to sit down. But if he is not out and he touches the ball, it's going up. Well, he knows the coach can't take you out if you score it. If you miss it, though, you can come sit down quick. Tracy draws to it. This is Ross, 26 feet away from the hole. Lockhart's got him on his hip. Ross going to shoot and hit the three-pointer. His fourth three-pointer of this is senior season. A technical foul. Ross the three-pointer. He made it. He made a gesture with his hand to the student body as he's running down the floor. Automatic technical. Inexcusable. Frustration. He's a senior. Never should have happened. He made a mistake. And he's going to pay the price. Oh, the students here will be out in the you, rest of the day. This is your job. You call it. You see it. There it is. How do you do? Ridiculous. Very regrettable by both Roth and I'm sure Don DeVoe too. And Jackson nails the free throw. And these students in Baton Rouge were not home for their intensity as spectators. They'll be on him the rest of the day if he returns. There's a chance that Don DeVoe won't let him play the rest of the game. Inexcusable. He's a senior. Should never, ever happen. 86-75. The feet to Sim. He's fouled. Fouled by Ronnie Reese, just for the game, to replace Ross. He took Ross out, as you mentioned, so on a smart play. Kick it down low immediately to the player just off the bench. He's cold. Make him play some defense through the foul. Tennessee reaching its limit with six now, the first time range. From this point forward, now I shoot in the ball. Notice Bell hasn't been in the lineup at all. He's been cold. 
been in a slump. Had a pretty good first half for a few minutes, but he's been on the pine the entire second half. Sam misses his first free throw opportunity. He has 10 rebounds this afternoon to go with those six points. But he's just three of 10 from the field. Now seven points for the 6'7 sophomore. And a player with that size and that bulk doesn't get to the free throw line that much. That means he's an outside shooter. He's got to take the ball to the basket. Such a wide body. He'll draw fouls all day. Taylor to next. On the drive. The rim was touched. No whistle. Next. Contact with Sun. Or Singleton, rather. Tyron Nix with 13 rebounds in this game. He's the bread and butter man trying to take over on himself. That touch in the rim could have been a goal-sending call. Didn't get it. With a second chance opportunity. All ball, but got him with the hip. He'll be in the line. Singleton in foul trouble now with four. LSU reaches its limit, like Tennessee, with 16 fouls. Nix with 13 points, nine in the second half. Well, it's just won't fall for him. The second of his pair. One of the last touch of the Olympic trials. Average 12 a game on the select group that played in Europe. Really fine-tuned his game. That's his 1,700th career point. 1,700 now. He'll never get, He'll never get 30 and Ernie. Ernie Grunfeld, the leading scorer. And this is a guy who one day will be on his shoes. Leading scorer on the The man took with four years he might be able to, but not the way Maravich averaged better than 40. Price. Down low. Lockhart. It rolled across the iron. And it belongs to the small guard in Tracy. Now Jackson. Blanton. Weaving. Feeding Jackson. Reverse layup. Deflected Lockhart. Next is 14th board. Jackson with 42 by our count, incidentally. Ooh, the three-pointer, Taylor. And in the timeout, Tennessee. 11 down, 6.19 to go. It's still not out of reach. 14 for Taylor. An 11-point game. Advantage LSU will be back. CC basketball wins there right here from the Maravich Assembly Center. It is Kentucky and LSU. Tom Hammond and Joby Hall on the call there. And then Saturday, the Crimson Tide of Alabama idles the day in action, too. Boy, Whips had a good year. Superb first four. Mr. Ansley and company. Benoit turned into a great player this year. LSU will have one timeout. The final six minutes of this game. Jackson with the right hand. 44 for Jackson. <laughs> Leaping, hang time, double flex, and the stop. Stop. Quarrington. The clock winds under the six-minute mark. Two Bell from the baseline. Will not go. Nick. The offensive rebound in the bucket. He thought he was fouled, but he was bumped by a teammate. The board pressure. Nick doing the job. So Tennessee's got its best lineup in the floor. Lots of athletes, lots of quickness. They'll pick up the tempo. It's been about a 10-point game throughout the afternoon. Singleton starts right, goes left, and scores. the glass. Forston got it to fall for his 13th point. Or what? Swearingen. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a goal. Most valuable player for each team. Sims may be one of them. They had to defend the defense and Sims with another gimme. This is Bell from three. It won't fall. Single and rebound. Quick out by Jackson. The bounce to Tracy. Foul by Bell. In addition to recognizing our two golf MVPs, Golf Royal and its dealers will donate a thousand dollar scholarship to the general scholarship fund of both Tennessee and LSU as part of the Golf Most Valuable Player Scholarship Program. The foul after the pass and a little exclamation point on the top of the head, Mr. Bell. Tracy to shoot a pair. One for two today. Doesn't have to score when he has Jackson and Bradley, but plays the defense, contributes. I'm up here. One of three fellas that made this team from a 
campus wide tryout program. It attracted 40 would be walk ons and Tracy along with Steve Ussery and Jason Cormier, the three fellows that Dale Brown kept from the student population at large. Dwayne Bryan played with him. He's at Georgetown. Sir Hankton played with him. He's at Auburn. So three off that state championship team. 98 83. The miss and the rebound by Sim. And with four and a half minutes to go, LSU still has its claws firmly in this one. Yeah. They'll take some time. Swearingen touched it on the bounce for Black and then tried to fake as if he did not. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Jackson, foul. He went back door, Tracy got him the ball. The defense converged and as usual, the score draws the foul. Jackson with 44. Noah has been able to stop number 35. His eighth free throw, now 45. Oh, the great ones seem to do it effortlessly. He probably broke it out into a sweat. He's so smooth, so cool with it. And he just goes in the hole. Oh, body English that time. 100 to 83. LSU hits the century mark. Nick, the black money. Isn't it amazing? Students used to go crazy when a team would hit 100 marks. Now it's just another, another day. Lockhart with 16. That's the ninth time this year that LSU has cracked a 100-point plateau. The third time in SEC play, 101 against Florida and 100 against these balls. Singleton, it won't fall for him. So LSU scored better than 100, both meetings against Tennessee. Swearingen whips it under Trump. Reese connects. One of the few good breaks Tennessee has. He really pushed it down the floor, the good pass, and they converted. The Virginia native, the 6'8 sophomore, with his first bucket. 100 to 87, and Dale Brown wants to call a timeout with 3.32. Remaining in the game. You know, one of the deals, LSU, everybody said they don't have much of a bench. But you know, you can work into such a thing where you get so fit that you don't need a bench. Tennessee, a lot more players, but they look winded. 100 to 87, LSU, more. After this word from our local station. We got two timeouts. Chris Jackson with 46 points this afternoon. Nearly half of LSU's total. Bayou Bengals winning 100 to 87 over visiting Tennessee with 332 remaining in the game. He was the player of the year in Mississippi, his junior and senior year, and got a great shot at being player of the year in the SEC his first year out the season. Dale Brown with a pair of timeouts remaining. Why would he take that one? Just to tell his players, look, it's still not over. You've got to take things under control. Protect the basketball. Don't make silly mistakes as you're playing for down the road. This marks the most times LSU has cracked a 100-point plateau since number 23 was wearing the purple and the gold since the Maravich era, 1969. Simmons. This is Blackman follows and draws contact. So LSU is not hit a 100-point plateau nine times in one year in 20 seasons. Uh, 51. He is Lockhart. Lockhart with his fourth. That was he doing the job 31. on the board, not turning the ball over, shooting well. You put all those three together, that puts the W nine times that he's been on the board. Quietly, another solid performance by this 6'7 senior. 20 points for Blanton. Steady. Coach always wants somebody he can depend on. Day in, day out, put the numbers on the board and leaves on the floor. Neil Brown says you take any other center in the league, any one of them, and I'll take Ricky Blanton and I'll beat you. He's proven it. 102 to 87. Bell from downtown. In and out. Singleton. Fighting Lockhart for it. Hell ball. It will belong to Tennessee. Still hustling. Tennessee. Wiping the ground. Lockhart really, really has played well. The shot from the corner usually means a long rebound. This time it comes up short. Scramble. The takedown. The pin. <laughs> Champions depressing. Wiping some perspiration off the floor. Singleton 
A youngster, too, from South Natchez, Mississippi. Not the only Mississippi native that can play this game for Dale Brown's Tigers. Lots of them. The Carol Green from Georgia out of Mississippi. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Singleton. Great freshman this year. Bell with the rainbow air ball. Jackson claims it. Half court to Tracy. Great pass to feed the ball. In hockey, they give two of six. One to Jackson and one to Tracy. Well, Jackson wants the double-double, so he's going to chastise Tracy for passing this one off. Tracy, take it in. But unselfishly, to Blanton, give him the deuce. The 75-foot pass Boom. from Jackson. And in the unemotional Blanton, shows his enthusiasm. The largest lead of the game, 18 by LSU, pulling away from Tennessee, which got it to a seven-point spread with 12 minutes to go. Nick, offline, Tracy claims it. So after that Dale Brown timeout, LSU regathered itself and is on this afternoon. The timeout and the technical on the throw. Got the fans up. Swearingen fouls out, retiring with 15 points. Well, these fans have seen some outstanding individual performances this afternoon. You see Swearingen there with his 15. Our golf most valuable players, I wonder who. Chris Jackson held in check to only 46. <laughs> and Ian Lockhart off the bench in the reserve role with 16 and some big boards for Tennessee. He may have earned a starting spot. Mark Griffith, nothing off the bench. As you see, Ian Lockhart, it's been a long afternoon. As part of the Golf Oil Most Valuable Player Award Scholarship Program, golf will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Tennessee and for Chris Jackson at LSU. They made it easy for us today. We didn't have to deliberate at all. It was academic. Did it by the numbers. Tracy will not fall next to the rebound. You realize this LSU team has only one senior, Blanton. No junior. Nicks again. Missing 16 rebounds, by the way, for Dyra Nix. Led the league as a junior in rebounder, so he can get up. Bell fouled Jackson on Chris's way to the hoop. He's got 46. His record is 54 with 228 to go. That's his third. Substitution for Tennessee, Ronnie Reese returns, number 34 there, and Dyra Nix will depart with this issue, having been decided. 7 and 16 from the field, only four at halftime, but he came back, went to the board real strong in the second half. That's where he got his turn. Jackson, a rare miss, the rebound to Reese. Well, he won't get 54 doing that. Bell, it's going up threes, and now hits one. That was full court pressure. This first bucket of the second half is third three-pointer of the afternoon. 15 for, uh, for Powell Rabbit. But there's no such thing as pressure when 35 has it in his hand. Beats any pressure. A 15-point spread, flat off the single beat. Dale Brown's Tigers will surpass their victory total of a year ago. Whoa. So you know, some throw it over Dale Brown. But you see Dale trying to reach for it. Because Jax is human. If he'd have caught that one, we'd have called him Superman forever. LSU won 16 last year. This will be their 17th win. Another bell, a rainbow three. Their ninth conference win. Singleton with the chance from Black. And easy does. Don DeVoe, you can fry an egg on his forehead. He's so hot right now. No defense. A three by Ronald Taylor. His fifth three-pointer, his 17th point of the game for the junior. Jackson, a quick inbounds to Blanton. Blanton fouled by Price. Don't you love the three-point shot? But it, it's close. It's 11 points. It was out of hand, and they keep shooting the three and drilling it. Don DeVoe with instructions to freshman guard Jay Price. Timeout on the court. 131 remaining in the game. LSU will own this afternoon, leading 107 to 96. You can paint this one purple and gold here for your LSU Tigers who played well, especially down the stretch. Where's that two? There it is. Need we say more? Jackson with 46. LSU shooting 5% better. Turnovers less. Rebound turnover points for more. LSU on top. Blanton steps to the line. With 24 and now 25. 
the leading Tiger in terms of minutes played. How durable is this guy? He's always on the court and has been for 40 years. Jackson has the most points in the Assembly Center at 48. There's a chance to break another record. Tracy, I'll tell. A big go! It won't fall. A long rebound to Taylor. Check his wrist out. That was a long one. Taylor blocked by Singleton cleanly. Jackson changes speed, crosses over, and they foul him. <laughs> All right. How many does he have now? All right. Jackson with 46. He's got 46. If he hits these two, he'll tie the most points ever in Pete's palace at 48. El by himself. All eyes on Chris Jackson. Wayne Sims has sat down. Gert Hammock replaced him. Hammock played in the first half. You see him there, number 43, as Jackson takes it again. He scores again. 48. Price from three. It won't fall. Well, put back well, however, by Ian Lockhart. The foul on Hammock. Count it. Kurt, the freshman, commits the foul. The Dutchman. Inside Lockhart. Look at him run down. Here he is, inside position. Hang it up strong. He's had a phenomenal afternoon for Don DeVoe. Ian Lockhart. From the first he don't mind going. Nassau. Missed the free throw on the fouls on Tennessee and Bell. This is, of course, the highest point total produced by LSU against a conference rival this year. There's 111 registered against the Big Orange. As Greg Bell has a foul. This is where those seniors put so much pressure on you because they have three or four guys that can score and score in a hurry. So you know you're going to have to have a good offensive night to play with them. Here's with the deep knee bend. Well, you did the Cajun name, Mouton, well. Now you're doing the Dutchman name from the Netherlands. Putting you to work. Yes. Polylingual, would you call it? Here is Gert from Didom, Netherlands. Well, he get down on the free throw. That's how they shoot free throws there. Most of the time they go in. No ball, and it belongs to LSU. Well, LSU's ball and LSU's danger. Give it to Jack to let him shoot and then take him out. LSU's next game against Kentucky is Blanton scores. Tennessee next at home Wednesday against Ole Miss. Price beating Lockhart. That's story. A thanks to the sports information directors here, Kent Lowe at LSU and David Grimm at Tennessee for their assistance this afternoon in the preparation of this broadcast. So LSU puts the pressure on Vanderbilt and Florida. Alabama with the weekend off. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt colliding this weekend. Florida and Kentucky, many of you will see that game later today. And Auburn hosting Mississippi State. There it is, 49. This for 50. What a player. What a player. That's 100. Unbelievable. Tennessee scores 100. They'll lose. Trailing by 16. Bell threw it away. Price could not save it. With 36 seconds to go. And Don DeVoe did not like that. I've got a timeout to use. I'm going to take it. We'll talk about things right here. This is one of those deals. Hey, this will put us two games back in the pack. We're playing again Wednesday. Focus in. Get ready. The executive producer of SEC Basketball, Jimmy Rayburn. The producer of today's game, Roger Roba. Our director, Dave Burchett. Assistant director, David Corrigan. Network coordinators, Tony Johnson, Dana Lambert. The technical director, Ben Huddleston. Graphics by Gil Heron from Memphis. And you see the rest of a very fine crew. Between Roger Roba, Dave Burchett, and Gil Heron, the most crawfish and raw oysters last night. You were in the crawfish up to your elbows when I arrived on the scene. Coach Roebuck in from Charlotte was right behind you. We put him on appeal that day. 
This crowd of better than 14,000 has seen a new individual scoring record here. 50 points by the freshman, Chris Jackson. Maybe a star to be one day. Right there. Wednesday night, Kentucky comes into town. Always an interesting series when the Cats and the Tigers get together. Some classic matchups in years past. Regardless of the records, Kentucky very capable of winning here. They have been up and down, yet when they play well, they're tough. They are tough. 37 ticks to the clock, standing between Coach Dale Brown and his 314th. LSU victory and his 15th against Don DeVoe. And Don DeVoe will have to wait till Wednesday to try and get number 200 at Tennessee. Neil Brown says, I don't have to do this anymore because of finances or because of ego or to prove myself. I do it now because I love it, and that makes it all the more enjoyable. He went to the Final Four a few years ago, so the salary went up. <laughs> no, so he doesn't need the money. He's up to the yeah. Mr. Jackson will take a curtain call. Tracy made a bow. Listen to the applause. The ovation for Chris Jackson. Uh, Chris Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Jackson has just set a Pete Maravich Assembly Center scoring record with 60 points. Price gets his three. Where is he? There he is. That'll take a smile out. He's got one of the many children that Dale Brown loves to have around the program with his arm draped around it. It came down to LSU, Mississippi State, and Alcorn State, and that hug says it all. He loves it in Tiger Town. Dale Brown says he is as fine a person as he is a player. And you hear that often, but about this fella, you can believe it. You can. And it doesn't hurt that he can put the ball in the hole. <laughs> Just to make it 120 to 103. Crazy, the sophomore with six the season high. And he plays for well against Georgetown on national TV. He's got a chance of being first team All-American. A legit shot. Price, no. That one hit the side of the backboard by Taylor. This is Travis Henry from three points. Downtown. One with ten seconds to go. Uh oh, it's got a shot a second. There it goes. Well, that's Henry. A shot a second. 122, 106. As Dale Brown's Tigers and Chris Jackson's Tigers have beaten Tennessee. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions exclusive coverage of Southeastern Conference basketball. And this one today, Journey Holmberg, belongs to LSU. And Axton Jackson. What a player. Dale Brown goes eight. Nine and three in the SEC, 17 and six overall. And there's a big one coming in Wednesday. Coming up Wednesday, the Big Blue from Lexington, here in Baton Rouge, to face LSU and then Kentucky hosting the Crimson Tide one week from today in Rupp Arena. Your final once again, LSU 122, Tennessee 106. For Journey Holper, I'm Paul Kennedy, reminding you that indeed you have been watching Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions' exclusive coverage of SEC basketball. Jackson will go to the line to shoot one and one. Doug Hartsfield picks up the foul. Doug Hartsfield, second for LSU is 13 of 14 from the free throw line. Thirty-five twenty-seven LSU with 3.33 left in the first half. 15 of 16 now for the Tigers at the line. Oh. 
Boykin with a nice running oh, jumper from the stripe. Blanton saves Jackson's pass to Sims. He goes to the bucket strong. It won't go. Here comes Boykin. Strong rebound inside. Hammock got a piece of the ball and apparently a piece of Burns. They'll put Burns at the free throw line. That's the second foul on Gert. And Cameron Burns, who makes his living from about five or six feet away, will go to the line. Let's look at the replay here. No one blocks the guy out, gets inside. Gert's having to defend him off and gets caught going up with him. The body foul there by Gert Hammock. Cameron Burns is a real physical player inside, and the, and the Tigers are going to have to contain him if they plan on winning the ball game tonight. He's their leading scorer uh, and leading rebounder, and he showed it there on that play. Singleton claims the rebound for LSU. Singleton works from the high post. Back to Tracy. Blanton fakes and fires. No. Tigers have had quite a few opportunities from the 15 and 16 foot line uh, tonight, but this won't go. Good pass inside, and Tracy prevents the bucket with the foul. Big Joe Courtney went up, and Dennis Tracy risked his life and every limb in stepping in there to block the big guy. Courtney, a 220 sophomore from Jackson. As you can see on there, there was no chance of Tracy even getting to the ball. He had to commit the foul. It's a good foul. Send him to the line. Let's see if he can scan both of them. 2.14 left. LSU with a 36-30 lead. Courtney is a 69% free throw shooter. Mississippi State has a team, 70%. Second year player out of Jackson. Hits them both. LSU by four with just over two minutes left in the first half. Tigers are getting into a rhythm here on offense. Hammock turns, leaves it short. Watts fakes, throws up a wild shot off the glass. Hammock claims part of the rebound. So does Courtney. Courtney goes down, and it should be LSU's ball. Watts goes to the bench. Here it comes. Watts takes it to the middle. Ball. Comes off, there's a big scramble for it. Gert goes over the back, ties it up for a good jump ball. Possession LSU. Back to play, Jackson misses. Sims rebounds, and the ball slapped out of his hands. Or rather, Mouton with a rebound. Tigers gain possession under their own goal. Blanton is fouled. Boykin charged with the foul there. Blanton got good position on him. And we'll go to the line shoot another pair of free throws, Lynn. This has not been one of Chris Jackson's crispest perform uh, most crisp performances, but he's had a few off minutes before and then really exploded in the second half. Yeah, Chris, there's nothing to worry about. He's, he's all right. Uh, this is his first game back as a collegiate in the state of Mississippi. I'm sure there's a lot of anxieties on that part, but uh, this I'm crowd, sure he'll come around. And the crowd giving him a hard time every time it gets the chance. LSU continues to shoot phenomenally from the free throw line. Blanton hits a couple more. LSU leads by six with 133 left. 17 of 18 from the line for LSU. LSU has been outscored by a bunch from the floor. Keep going, 
plus the fact that they are a very physical ball club, and uh, when they foul, you know it. The return is good by Lockhart. State by four. Blanton answers for LSU. Good assist by Lyle. Good post up by Blanton down on the baseline. Ten minutes and 12 seconds are left in the ball game. State by two. And they'll go to the line. Burns and Watts lead Mississippi State in scoring with 14 and 13 respectively. State shooting well, 51%. LSU shooting 39%, and that was the percentage that LSU shot in the first game against Mississippi State and lost despite a furious rally in the final few minutes. Jackson with 17, Mouton 13 to lead the Tigers tonight. Burns now has 15. He can add to that. Mississippi State by four. Blanton from Jackson. This is Merritt. may have re-earned a starting spot tonight, Bo. He really has come in here and inspired the team to go on. Uh, they're giving us Tigers a fit tonight. Eight points for Boykin. This shot. Lots. Tip, no good. Merritt has it again. And he'll go to the free throw line. Sims got him. Well, I think they're going to rule Tracy on the foul. Coming up, you see Dennis reaching in right there on the foul down low. Uh, got him on the way up. They're going to shoot a one and one. Good call and great camera work there. You saw Tracy reaching in and holding the wrist. Doug Hartsfield has just checked back in for Mississippi State. He played some in the first half. He wears number 20, Hartsfield. Merritt has just given State a five-point lead. It's now six. This is State's biggest lead. 9-13 left in the ballgame. Jackson. Mouton. Blanton. It's rejected. Again, the Tiger bench wants goaltending. hope we have that one on tape. Yeah, we need to look at that one again. Mississippi State out rebounding LSU, 30 to 27. 8:45 left. 67-61 State. Tracy has it knocked away from the high and on court score. Coach Brown, he's a little bit bothered by this. Has to figure out what to do to get these Tigers back on track. State by eight. Back door to Mouton. Offensive. Good call, too. Time to get a timeout. Not too much doubt about that one. Mouton made a good back door play, but mm -hmm. the man was there. We need a timeout. LSU calls timeout. You hear the crowd coming live. 69, 61. Eight minutes and 19 seconds are left in this ball game. Two streaks are on the line. LSU's six-game winning streak, and State trying to avoid its seventh straight loss. Let's take a look again at that block shot down here on Blanton. 
He goes up strong, puts it on the glass. He gets it after oh, yeah. the ball hits Absolutely. the glass. Absolutely goaltending. That should have been a goaltending call. But the Tigers can't worry about the referee, and they got to get back and play their style of game. And that's aggressive defense. And, and hold on to the ball, try to get this crowd out. Coach Brown is trying to get, get them to respond. Uh, he needs their attention. They need to calm down, relax, come out and play their style of game. There's a lot of time left in this game. Eight minutes, 19 seconds. They're only down eight. And, and we've got the uh, second half turnovers there. You see LSU just can't seem to get it going. They're down. They've turned it over four times for the Bulldogs. And uh, we have not created any. He's put in Tracy down here to hope, hopefully uh, pick up a few steals. Lockhart off the glass. Gives State a 10-point lead. Then they can't miss. They're hitting about 50% from the field tonight. Sims. That's the sixth air ball for LSU. Mouton, Tracy, listen to the crowd. Jackson, Sims, and Blanton for LSU, a three-guard offense for the Tigers. State leads by 10. Seven minutes and 33 seconds are left, and LSU can start whittling into the lead now. to Blanton, shovels it to Sims, it's stripped out of his hands, and a foul, I think, called on Lockhart. It is. Good pass inside there by Blanton. You can just see it in his eyes. He's ready to play. He's going to take over this game as a true captain would. Uh, Blanton, the heart and soul of this team, uh, knows that it's on his shoulders to get us back into the ball game, and he's going to do everything he can. There it comes down low. You see Blanton look inside, nice shovel pass to Wayne. Got it thrown on by Lockhart. That's his first personal. Sends Wayne to the line for a two-shot foul. That helps. LSU hit 17 of 18 in the first half from the free throw line, but have not had many chances in the second half. We're still shooting poorly from the field. First half, we only were 33% from the field, and that uh, poor shooting has continued on into the second half. 40% right now from the floor for LSU. Tigers going to pick up man-to-man -man full court. Merritt ran right over Tracy in backcourt and no whistle, and he plowed him. Tipped in by Boykin. Boykin. 63 LSU down by 10, 652 left. Jackson tries to answer, cannot do it. Turn with another big rebound. The Tigers have been out rebounded tonight, and they have a small lineup in the ball game now. Six and a half left. State by 10. Tigers are still in that man-to-man, -man, real aggressive defense. They got to start making some things happen. They need a few turnovers, a few steals, and get back into this ball game. State starting to milk the clock a little bit. It's 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Blanton with a big board. That could be a block. It'll go against Doug Hartsfield on the block. Mouton gets the ball in the lane. Foul was called. He wasn't planted. Both feet weren't down on the floor. Singles and checks back in for LSU and Mouton. Well, let's see what they do here. There are six players on the court for LSU. Now Mouton walks off. So it's Singleton and Tracy. Jackson, Sims, and Blanton for LSU. Uh-oh. And that's typical of what's happening here for the Tigers tonight. Nothing's going wrong. Here we go, Jackson inbounding it. It goes right off Ricky's foot. Just out of reach of the Tigers. They're going to have to 
start creating those turnovers and get back in here. Six minutes left in the ball game. And Mississippi has a 10 point lead. Six minutes left. Mississippi State looking for its fourth straight win over LSU. Good defense right here by the Tigers, but stayed in no hurry. Singleton ahead to Tracy and leaves it a little short. Lockhart comes up with Singleton's pass. LSU down by a dozen. 16 for Lockhart. Blanton works inside and hits it off the glass. State by 10. Five minutes are left. 16 for Blanton. 24 straight games in double figures. Possessions start to become very important here. Merritt from outside. It won't go. State with a strong rebound. Burns puts it back in. No one even blocked him off the board, Lynn. Jackson. State by 10. 4.25 left. State calls timeout. The Tigers trail by 10 with 419 left. We'll be back after this word from one of our corporate sponsors. Well, it's another 10K season. I'll settle for 10 wins. Yeah, but you can't lose with 10K. It's low on. You see the state huddle there. Things are going well. Led by Burns, 18 points and 10 rebounds. 11 of those points coming in this half. Well, the clock starts to become a big factor, Bo Bonson, and LSU is well aware of it. Yep, and that's why State called that timeout. He's going to try to get them to work the ball a little longer, be more aware of the clock, shot clock, uh, use up some of that time on the clock, uh, keep it out of the hands of uh, Dynamite duo Ricky Blanton and, uh, and Chris Jackson and hope to put the Tigers away for good. Well, the fact is this. The Tigers have to hope State misses, and LSU has to score on virtually every possession now. Every possession for the Tigers is critical. Tracy works on Watts. Tony takes him to the corner. Back outside to Burns. Boykin. Four minutes left. State by ten. Boykin. Here we are. Burnell getting real aggressive out front. But the defense reaches in. A little push off there. Referee gets Burnell for, for reaching in on uh, Boykin. With a minute and a half to go, Alabama leads Vanderbilt 65-58. Three fifty-one left here. State by ten over LSU. State has committed only two team fouls in this half, too, Bo. So they've got plenty to waste. will take a furious rally by LSU to overcome this lead. Tigers are going to have to crank some three-pointers. Jackson, yes, that's a two-point field goal. Jackson. 79-69 state with three and a half left. it away. 
26 on the shot clock, 3.15 left in the game. The alley-oop. Yeah. 20 points for Burns. Merritt, I think, will be charged with the foul. Let's take a look at this again. Burns gets the alley-oop from the inbounds pass down low. Nothing but straight up and, and slams it home for another two points. Lyle Mouton checks back in for LSU to replace Tracy. And that, I'm sure, is for the offensive firepower that Mouton may bring. 81-69, Mississippi State. Tracy's going to come right back in, though. Blanton to Jackson. That one's a nice play on the baseline. Nice play. Three minutes are left. A foul at midcourt. Charged against Jackson. You see it here down low. Ricky looks baseline. Chris flips in behind the defense, lays it in off the glass. LSU shot 17 of 18 from the free throw line in the first half. State is 9 of 9 from the line in this half. A big hand for Boykin as he leaves the game. He's really been inspirational to the team tonight. Coming in off the bench. State is 11 of 11 from the line in the second half. Nothing going right for LSU. They're loving it here. Lockhart adds another one. 85-71, State with 2.40 to go. Blanton was held by Merritt. Here we go, looking back on it. Chris sends up an air ball. Tracy tries to save it. Bounces around. Burns gets it up the court to Lockhart. He brings the house down. There's a timeout with 236 left. Mississippi State leads 85-71. Well, the Harlem Globetrotters will be at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center this Monday night. That's February 6th. It'll start at 7.30. Youngsters will have a great time. Family entertainment, of course, with the ever-popular Harlem Globetrotters. That's Monday night. Size 14 on the end line. Jackson wheels inside. He's bumped. He scores anyway. What a shot. Tigers have changed defense. Have gone to a man-to-man. -man. They were just sitting back in the zone, and things weren't happening for them. They had to uh, try to change their defense. Blanton's going to take Burns inside. Carter misses. Blanton brings it up court for LSU. Mouton for three. Yes, he in a row. Three in a row. Loss sure has been playing with a lot of. On the outside, he looks like he's got a lot of confidence in his shot, and the Tigers are, are starting to pull away, 51-43 with 15 minutes left in the game. 13 points on the night for Mouton, nine of them from the three-point range. Here's Watts. Nope. Jump passes out back to uh, Lockhart, who bangs one. Oh, no, like, 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 like. 50, 50. 51-45, LSU with 14-47 left. Jackson high off the glass, and he's fouled. Great shot, Chris likes that one. Nope, they're going to call a foul on Jackson, but the bucket will count. They'll give him the bucket, man, but that was a great offensive move he put on there. Let's take a look at it. choice here. Offensive foul or not? Chris just left him sitting in his tennis. Goes up straight. I don't see it, Lynn. 
Five out of the four. I don't think he was in place. Jackson has 17 right now. I got to agree with Chris. I think that was up. LSU by eight with just under 15 minutes left. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs> Chris just made an outstanding move, takes it down the lane, gets both men up in the air. You see him moving down low. I don't believe that was a charging foul, and I agree with Chris. He needs to get a little upset about it. He'll get him back. That was Greg Carter who had <laughs> sat down there and drew the charge. 53-45 LSU. 14 and a half minutes are left. The Tigers changed that defense to man-to-man, -man, Lynn, and it's uh, starting to pay off. Watts hands another one. Blanton. Oh, my. Had to be oh, interference. No. Coach Brown is up off the bench, wanting goal tending foul, and they storm down on the other end. Coach Brown is upset. Cameron Burns converted for Mississippi State, and that cuts the lead to four with 13.54 left in the ball game. Mouton for three. This one won't go. He hit three in a row. Singleton touched it last. Let's, let's take a look at this once again, Lynn. Going up high. The ball, in that picture, it's hard to tell if it was goaltending or not. Uh, but Coach Brown sure was in the impression that it was. Tony Watts has just packed a three-pointer from the top of the key. And LSU wants a timeout and gets it. Mississippi State has climbed two within one. Things are warming up, then. 23 left in this ball game. LSU by one. We'll be back after these messages from their Tiger Vision Network. Blanton throws it in for Mouton. Trouble in the corner. Who touched it last? State touched it last. Jackson leads everybody in scoring tonight with 17. Mouton has 13 for LSU. Burns is the leading scorer for Mississippi State with nine. Lynn, that was a good timeout for the Tigers. Uh, the Bulldogs seem to start putting it on them there. They, they, they ran off a, about a five-point swing there. The Tigers needed to stop, regroup, and come back strong. Mouton will get credit for the bucket. Goaltending on the drive. Here we go. You see him going inside. Cameron Burns going up real high, catching the ball off the glass, hitting the rim. Good call by the referee. Actually, Burns never touched the ball, but did get the rim. Boykin entices Blanton into a foul. That's only his second. Bo, has Blanton ever fouled out of a game? I don't believe, Lynn. Uh, he's got a, a tendency to stick in there, not create the fouls, and uh, usually at the end of the ball game, Ricky Blanton's the man to go to. Reginald Boykin, uh, as you can see there on their screens, that started uh, last year 25 games. And this year he hasn't started but eight. Uh, they really were depending on him to set the tone for this year to make it a more open offense. But the young freshman in Watts has uh, somewhat come on, and he's had to play more of a reserve role this year. LSU by one with 12.44 left. Singleton goes baseline and scores. Nice move by Burnell. <laughs> Singleton is a 60.2% field goal shooter. Five points tonight for the freshman from Natchez. Watts works against Mouton. Good job by Mouton of fighting through a pick. It'll count. Singleton is charged with the foul. There it is. Let's take another look at it inside. Good lob pass inside, down low. Burns takes it up strong. And uh, Vernell just reaches in and gets him on the arm. 
He's a very physical player, and he's showing it here in the second half. 12 points now for Burns, and we are tied at 57. Tied with 12 minutes. That's 14 for Burns. Jackson cannot answer for LSU. Mouton touched it last. Eight thousand two hundred seventy on hand here tonight. Watts. Blanton takes control. Jackson ahead to Ricky. Twelve footer. No. Eleven and a half minutes are left. 57 apiece. State can take its first lead in a long time. The 8,270 here. And there is the lead. That brings him to their feet. Boykin for Mississippi State. Jackson for three. Get in there. No. He'll get another shot at it. He's nearly beheaded, but no foul. Singleton. Sims cannot save it. We are told that the Coliseum holds 9,377 at capacity and about 1,000 or so less than that here tonight, although there don't look to be too many empty seats. Not many at all. At any rate, this is about twice the norm.